we'll begin our day with morning prayer on page 295. Our hymn will be hymn number 868, Awake My Soul and With the Sun. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hymn number 868. From Martin Luther's small catechism, the Ten Commandments, as the head of the family should teach in them in, in a simple way to his household. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust God above all things. The second commandment, you should not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, 
you satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. The third commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. The fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not despise or anger our parents or other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. The fifth commandment, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. The seventh commandment, you shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions, or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. The Eighth Commandment, You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. The Ninth Commandment, You shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, or get them in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. The Tenth Commandment, You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, or his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. The close of the commandments. What does God say about these commandments? He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the father to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generation to those who love me and keep my commandments. What does this mean? God threatens to punish all who break these commandments. Therefore, we should fear his wrath and not do anything against him. But he promises grace and every blessing to all who keep these commandments. Therefore, we should also love and trust in him and gladly do what he commands. We confess together the words of the true Christian faith in, in, the, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when our work, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its being, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go joyful to work in the peace of the Lord.